The Last of Us Part 1 is the most gun shootingest, pipe swingingest, dude stranglingest, knife stabbingest, ladder movingest, giraffe pettingest game since The Last of Us 2. You play as Joel Biden on his quest to move every dumpster in America to the other end of the back lot. Incidental to this mission, Joel must escort a girl named Ellie across the country without being called creepy. To accomplish this, Joel will treat Ellie with disdain, then begrudging respect, then genuine care, demonstrated by some of the most powerful grunts since The Witcher. Speaking of The Witcher, The Last of Us went on to inspire an entire genre of serious old men protecting their children or surrogate children that eventually culminated in domestic abuse charges. And speaking of abuse, let's talk about the gameplay. As Joel, you'll spend most of the game strangling all kinds of enemies, such as Antifa, ACAB, and Bostonians. You can even strangle the zombies, unless you can't. And yes, I did say zombies. Welcome to the early 2010s. So that's too silly for this very serious video game. So instead of something ridiculous like a viral pandemic, there's a fungus among us. Because people didn't wash their corn, humanity has been brought to the brink of extinction extinction by an outbreak of athlete's foot. This has created a generation of people too traumatized to shower. This is based on a real fungus that infects ants, but ant society hasn't collapsed. So I guess we know who the superior species is, but try not to ask too many questions about how a country where there are more guns than people is overrun by zombies in the first place. We've wiped out more predacious species by accident. It's hard to imagine we'd be done in by slower, even dumber humans. As far as I can see, the main identifiable difference between me and a zombie is that I can drive an M1150 assault breacher. That's not something some fucking fungus is going to cope with. I don't care how many armored plates it grows. So grab your prison shit, take some expired medications, and help Got your it. friend get the door as I serve as your guide through the terrifying and cynical world of The Last of Us. Welcome to Texas, where gun violence is a fun pastime and society collapses every time the temperature drops below 40 degrees. We begin our story as a girl named Sarah. You, uh, shouldn't get too attached. Her father, Joel, is a chronically out-of-work construction worker who can somehow afford the most spacious three-bedroom I've ever seen. He arrives home late on his birthday to find Sarah has bought him a new watch with the money she made from selling her Adderall prescription. My therapist says, young Joel isn't real, he can't hurt you. Uh, hello? Amogus. Ah, uh, shit. Ah, oh, fuck. After checking outside and seeing everything's okay, I try to go back to bed, but I guess Sarah canonically has insomnia because the game won't let me. There's a lot of themes in this game, but the main one you're gonna notice is how every hallway is as wide as the corridors of Buckingham Palace. Sarah, stay back. Something is sus. Uh, does he have a mushroom growing out of the side of his head? Jimmy, did you eat the fucking corn? Tommy! Hey, you guys haven't eaten any vegetables, have you? We drive through the speedrunner's bane as we watch the world evolve into chaos faster than an episode of regular show. The concussive force of the car crash throws our consciousness into the body of our father. Now we get to enjoy The Last of Us's riveting gameplay. But before we can die to the square button, we're saved by the real hero of The Last of Us, the Noble Brick. We then get our yearly cardio exercise as we run through Ohio. After taking what most Texans would describe as a leisurely walk, we're saved by the army. Unfortunately, it's the US army. Stop right there. Did you eat any vegetables today? No, just 30 pounds of raw beef. Impossible, you're too fit to be living on the standard Texan diet. What in tarnation? Don't lose your head there. Troll loses his child tax credit. Oh, happy birthday, by the way. A new fungus is among us, and it's taking the nation by storm. It's called Ligma. Ligma. The government has declared martial law to control the spread of Ligma. Lockdown protesters are asking people to bite their throats President to prove Ligma, Ligma is a hoax. Of Ligma was created in a Chinese the Walking lab. Dead began production of its 40th season. A group this called week. the Fireflies claimed responsibility. Quote, you better stop being fash or President I'm going to cancel you on Twitter. Twitter. With a tremendous National Ligma coordinator declared it stop searching for a vaccine, citing they only took the job until they're banned to join the fireflies. Come on, I know you've got nothing else going on. 20 years later and the fungus is still among us. The US government has militarized the CDC and established a quarantine zone in Boston to protect the nation from the green menace. Joel is living in City 17, where not a single window is still intact and every wall is plastered with graffiti lauding the fireflies, a group that celebrates Boston's rich Irish heritage. The food is running out. Healthcare workers have stopped taking people's shit and citizens must endure the occasional light terrorist attack. Joel is working as a smuggler with Tess Servopoulos. That's her real name. I did not make that one up. Joel and Tess's relationship can be entirely summarized as one person who's really vague about every single fucking thing they talk about and another person who's too dumb to understand it. A couple of guys who were up to no good started making trouble in the neighborhood, but I took care of it. Are these guys still alive? I handled myself. Tess, this is not useful information to me. After strolling through Tough Guy Alley, we're introduced to the main gameplay loop wherein you drop down to an area full of waist-high barricades, attempt to silently strangle everyone, fuck up, and shoot everything that moves. 
My favorite thing to do in this game is throw a bottle at someone, close the distance, take them hostage, shoot their best friend in front of them, then execute them. Does that make me a psychopath? Only if my therapist finds out. While Joel and Tess are out one day murdering the competition, they stumble into the plot of The Last of Us. Hey, I was going to hire that guy for a job, but seeing as how Tess just ventilated his skull, I guess I'll hire you guys. Wow, this murdering the competition really works. Why doesn't every business do this? I'm going to introduce you to Ellie. She's small, but she talks like a David Mamet play. You're going to take her to the state house. There's just something you should know. Catch these hands, motherfucker! Oh shit, she's a zoomer. On the way out, we immediately get caught. Shit tier smugglers. But where they struggle to smuggle, they know the drill to kill. Ellie is surprised the man she stabbed in the femoral artery is now dead. Get used to it. This is going to be a running theme. Joel, do you want to take a look at this? You don't just want to tell me what- Oh shit, you have ligma? I'm immune, no cap. Oh well, that's good enough for me, let's go. In order to escape the dreaded clutches of Boston, we'll need to employ Skyrim style stealthy strategies. And when that inevitably fails, we get to experience the game's combat, where we learn that getting parasitized by mushrooms makes you more resistant to bullets. Here we'll spend most of our time sneaking through Boston's most available corporate real estate. We're also introduced to the clickers, zombies that have somehow developed echolocation. This game is very serious, you guys, I swear. Oh my god, Tess, are you okay? It's not the end of the world. Okay, could you maybe just be like 5% more specific? As we arrive at the state house, we discover a scene so shocking it turned me into fucking cinema sins for a second. The soldiers rolled up, killed the fireflies, then left, then came back. What, to check on the corpses? Come on, Tess, we need to go. No, Joel, this is the last stop for me. Tess, what the hell are you talking about? I'm canceled. I've yeed my last haw. Sus, she's being vague again. Shit, Tess, just tell me what the fuck you mean for once in your fucking life. I have the link. You have to take Ellie to Tommy. Promise me. Promise me you'll be ambiguous about my death for no reason. In any other action game, you have to spend bullets to make bullets. But in the final of you, Joel's germophobia has given him an aversion to secondhand bullets, and he can only occasionally scrape together a couple of rounds from enemies who had just been unloading on him like he was in American high school. We enter the dank cave of Park Street Station, where we discover the valuable pallet moving mechanics. You can breathe these things? I said no cap. I'm immune, on God. Immune or not, it's gotta be like inhaling cotton. All right, I'll take you to my brother Tommy's place. He knows more than me. He probably knows where the IRA is hiding. Just one condition. You're not allowed to ask me about my tragic backstory. Bet? I'm not sure what that means, but I can tell from context it's an agreement. All right, great. Let's go get a car from my friend Ted Kaczynski. Welcome to the town of Lincoln, or as I call it, the Iraq Experience. This town has more IEDs per capita than Fallujah because it's watched over by Bill, the patron saint of missing fingers. And now, to advance the plot, we need Bill to give us his car. To find him, we'll have to navigate the kind of smart, walkable, mixed-use urbanism it's illegal to build in most quarantine zones. Today, on the adventures of Joel and his favorite brick, we find ourselves struggling to survive in small-town America with a variety of environmental puzzles. Thank God the Lumberyard has kept this place stocked with enough loose 2x12s to bridge the Grand Canyon. This is also the chapter where the crafting system will come into full force, and you'll start spending hours scouring every desk drawer and back alley for precious scissors. Holy shit, will you need a lot of scissors. However many scissors you find is never enough. You can also find random prescription medications that make you hear farther instead of giving you diarrhea. This town has a lot to explore, and I can't imagine this game being as good if I missed a single second of it. There are people who speedrun this game, but that feels like speedrunning fucking American dad. 80% of the enjoyment in the first of them comes from the story, and you have to give yourself room to experience it or you're gonna feel like you're suffocating to death. After getting fridged and discovering the infinite ammo hack, we're saved by the absolute unit of a man, the big chungus himself, Andy Shrek. Uh, he's just fucking Shrek. Somebody! What the fuck are you doing? Let me go! What are you doing in my town? We need a car. Oh, well, that's all you had to say. Come on then. Here, here's a shotgun while you're at it. You know, Joe, someone once told me the world was gonna roll me. You see, I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed. So I took the sharp tools out of the shed and I put them in a big bomb. Now I roll everyone else. By the way, where's Tess? She's... Uh, Never mind, I don't care. You know, I used to have a partner I had to look after, a donkey. At first I thought I resented him, but then I realised that I definitely resented him. Anyway, eventually he uh, left me and uh, well, I realised that I didn't need anybody. But you need a car battery, so let's go get one from the school. Entering a high school, we try our best to utilise the stealth mechanics, but at the end of the day this is a high school and it has plenty of bullets. Before we can escape, I notice the room seems to be set up for a boss fight. Hey Bill, this is sus. I'm <laughs> The fungus is more among us than it's ever been. Apparently, if you're infected long enough, you become a Dark Souls boss. Normally, a bloater will tear you in half vertically, but I've got a fucking upload schedule to keep, so I threw in every craftable I had until it went away. What the hell was that, Bill? What the hell is that? Bill, if you think I'm gonna turn my head to the suck. Did you see that sucker over there? You stupid donkey. I'm sorry, Bill, I can tell. You were really good roommates. I found the car. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Why does the fungus make them bulletproof? Fungi are like onions. They have layers. You ain't gonna make it. Yeah, probably not. You're gonna get Andrew Ryan so hard at the end of this. Okay, I get it. We square? Yeah, we're square. Then get out of my swamp. Somebody.
Hey, I brought my mixtape. Plug it in. Give it here. No, no. We're listening to the music of my youth. Big Iron remixes. You see, this is Big Iron, but the opening of B-Movie. I'd play the rest of the New Vegas soundtrack, but this is a confined space and I don't have a fire extinguisher. This is a fucking bop. Driving along Pennsylvania's best maintained highway because Joel is a fucking idiot. We hit what is somehow the first traffic we've encountered. Joel could easily go around this, or he could drive through a dense urban core. That sign won't stop me because I don't know how to read. Joel makes the critical mistake of driving through Pittsburgh, as it seems untouched by the apocalypse. It's here we discover that Joel is distrustful. Some might even say suspicious. Oh my god, Joel, are we gonna stop and help that guy? I don't stop for pedestrians. Ellie, I'm gonna teach you how to drive a truck like a true Texan. Is that a bus? Yeah, you're gonna wanna watch out for those. Welcome to Fallout 3 The Pit. The denizens of Pittsburgh threw off Fedra's brutal military rule and established their own brutal military rule, but with even fewer resources. This has caused them to become kill crazy to the point of insolvency. Bullets are so expensive I'm strangling everyone I meet because at least these guns are free. Meanwhile, these guys are burning gas and rubber all around the city, blasting holes in random walls with a 50 cal. Here you'll spend too much time lost in the back room, strangling people who have taken an extreme interest in a specific patch of brick wall before you get frustrated, fuck up the stuff, and have to kill everyone within the radius of a city block. I never want to accuse a naughty dog game of dragging. This section dragged hard in my intestines after I met that Humvee. This chapter is just watching backrooms videos waiting for the monster to show up. Except sometimes the monster is you. So I'm going to do what the state of Pennsylvania is too gutless to do and excise Pittsburgh entirely, one person at a time. But just when you thought the game was going to devolve into needless brutality, we meet Henry, a black man in a horror franchise who shares Joel's hobby of crushing people's windpipes. Hey, why did a timer just appear above my head? Uh, this is Sam, by the way. What the fuck? So what brings the two of you to Pittsburgh? What brings anyone to Pittsburgh? Human trafficking. We're trying to join up at the Fireflies. I was thinking becoming a child soldier would help Sam be less of a screw up. You got a plan to get out of here? I do. I've been working on it for a while. All right, hit me with it. We're gonna leave. Fucking brilliant. You know, I was being sarcastic earlier, but that actually worked really well. Yeah, but I feel like we're forgetting something. Oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. What in tarnation? Uh, oh yeah, I don't know how to swim. Probably should have mentioned that. We wash ashore on the famous Pittsburgh beaches and make our way to an inviting sewage outflow pipe. Don't go in the sewers. Worst mistake I ever made. Our gang now scours the suburbs of Pittsburgh, canvassing for votes. Unfortunately, Joel Biden doesn't perform as well in the suburbs, and we must contend with the suburban sniper. Instead of practicing the ancient art of the shoot and scoot, the sniper has graduated from the Call of Duty Academy with a master's in camping. 1v1 me on rust. 360 quick scope only. Campers are the scum of the earth, but what he doesn't realize is that I graduated from the Battlefield 4 School of Counter Knifing. Hey guys, Big Beak Entertainment here. Welcome to YouTube in 2009. It turns out camping is great, actually. Please enjoy my Modern Warfare 2 headshot compilation. Imagine if they took me down right now. They'd be insanely embarrassed that they spent 30 squillion bullets and their armored car taking me down for about six arrows in their toilet's U-bend. You know, Joel, when this timer first appeared above my head, I thought, like every other black man in a horror franchise, I was gonna die horribly. But now that we're here, safe at this radio station, I'm starting to think that maybe I'm not defined by this timer above my head. Maybe tropes don't define our existence and I can just focus on being the best big brother I can be for Sam. Speaking of which, where is that fuck up? Sam is sulking because Henry thinks he's a screw up, which he is. How are you so brave? I'm plenty scared. I'm afraid of being alone. Why aren't you afraid of Ligma? Oh yeah, I'm immune. Really? Could I be immune? No, it's just me. Anyway, here's a transformer or some shit. Okay, good night, sweet dreams. I wanted Bionicle. The next morning. Hey Ellie, would you mind waking up sleepyhead Sam? Hey, well Sam, I'm not interested in you like that. <laughs> Among us. This is all your fault, Henry. Wait, we made it all the way through Pennsylvania without once seeing a gas station. I'm gonna shoot you in the face, Joel. Whoops, slipped. Well, that was fucking weird. And then nothing happened for four months. Welcome to Jackson County, Wyoming. Nothing of interest has happened in the last 1700 miles. We were robbed of Joel and Ellie's adventures through fucking Iowa. They apparently walked the entire way from Pittsburgh to Jackson over the course of three months. That's a two week bike ride. Did the virus destroy all bikes or would Joel rather die than be seen on a bicycle? Either way, it's safe to say American car culture has outlived America. Are you complaining about the small mindedness of literary apocalypse settings again, big brother? Tommy. You look old. You look like you've been on a journey of self-discovery. We've got ourselves a stable, non-cannibal community here. This is my wife, Maria. She's not that interesting. Come take a look at my hydroelectric dam. How do you deal with infected? It's called a phalanx. Every now and then, the boys and I line up with our sarissas, and that pretty much solves every problem we've had so far. And that works? It will until one of them figure out how guns work. I can't believe the army never thought of this. It was literally designed to counter fast, disorganized hordes. So we do that for the zombies, and usually we can tell when we're about to fight humans because 
because there'll be a suspicious amount of chest high walls. Yeah, actually, I noticed some on the way in here. Great. Now I gotta deal with this. Welcome to Ted Bundy's ranch, except instead of a group of true patriots willing to die to let their cows eat for free, it's a bunch of nerds and hard hats too stupid to live, but at least they're smart enough to wear head protection on a job site. Unlike Joel, a literal contractor. Anyway, now that that's over, I have a proposition for you. I'm not taking that girl off your hands. It would deprive you of your character arc. Don't matter, because the girl's gone. We track Ellie down to a random house in the forest where she and Joel have their most important conversation in the narrative. You're not my daughter, and I don't care how many times you say the word shit, I'm never gonna care about you like you're one of my own, because you have no idea what true loss is. No you. Ah, oh, well shit, now that you mention it, I never thought of it that way. Well, we best be moving on. Really? You don't want to spend the night in a place with central heating? Power of friendship will keep us warm. Do you need any supplies or guns? I'm more of a strangler. Do you even have enough food and medicine to survive the winter? I can't hear you, I'm too far away. Welcome to Kent State University, a school powered by equal parts innovation and violence. I don't care what kind of hurry you're in, you're not leaving a flamethrower behind. We make our way through the facility to discover the fireflies have wasted my time yet again by leaving. We also learn that a dude just released the infected monkeys. The definition of fucking around and finding out. Fortunately for us, a side effect of Ligma is the compulsion to make random audio logs. If only they would have left some sort of clue! They told me not to release the infected monkeys. But how bad could it be? By the time you're listening to this, I'll be dead. <laughs> Bitten by a monkey. <laughs> but I'd do it again. <laughs> As I sit here dying, I find myself pondering the great questions of life. <laughs> Turn myself into a pickle. <laughs> Why were the holes in the cages the perfect size? <laughs> I mean, can we really be sure this vaccine wouldn't have caused autism? Though they went where all League of Legends players go. Salt Lake City. Who are these guys? Oh, oh shit, it's PETA. Where are the monkeys? Bring us the monkeys. Welcome to the reverse hospital, where you enter healthy and leave dead. Using the twin powers of crouching and guns, we're able to operate a PETA-approved shelter with maximum efficiency. But remember, Joel is an anti-OSHA contractor, and therefore he absolutely refuses to cap his rebar. Welcome to Wii Sports Resort, Zombie Edition. Today's activity is archery, except if you're off target, you starve to death. Ellie is hunting a deer that refuses to die. Hopefully I didn't just piss off the John Wick of deers. Hey there, little girl. Are you a pedophile? We're with Peter. And we're here to protest you for hunting that poor deer. Meat is murder, you know. Yeah, well, so is murder. And you didn't answer my question. As long as we're not 500 feet from a school, I do not need to answer that. Joel, meanwhile, has been laid up with a case of the old unspecified disease. Don't worry, Joel. I'm going to take care of you because I know one day you'll do the same for me. Sometimes foreshadowing is relatively obvious. Ellie is then immediately pursued until she's headlocked by the pedophile and taken to Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria to answer for her crimes. You and I are not so different there, Spider-Man. We at PETA have always known that meat was murder, but only after we ran out of our tofu did we realize that murder was meat. What the fuck are you talking about? I'm talking about the most dangerous game, Long Pig, the Alabama Three Course, the old Florida Snack. We needed food, but all we had were poor old animals. It wasn't ethical to kill them, they never did any harm to us. And then we realized there was a species that did do us harm. And we got to thinking, if it was ethical to loot the clothes off your enemies, why not their meat? So you cannibals? We prefer ethical carnivores. Here, why don't you try some? This is not fussing. This is the driest fucking barbecue I've ever had. Where's the fucking steak sauce? You stupid girl. You just don't get it. This is Carolina style. I think you mean shit style. Welcome back to the final of you. And I do mean that because Joel is no longer sick and has gone sicko mode. In his old man strength returned to him, he tortures information from two nameless goons using the techniques he learned from his time as a construction superintendent. And since he's learned his lesson, you better believe this rampage will be in compliance with OSHA regulations. Ellie makes her way through the cannibal carnival to the local Outback Steakhouse. Everything about this room screams boss fight, but I seem to be here on the wrong day. It's not until we try to leave that we're disarmed by Nathan Drake. Unfortunately, Fortunately for him, he trapped both of us in a room with an infinite supply of bottles, and he's about to get glass. It's a ballroom blitz. Welcome to the final boss fight of the game, unless you count unarmed doctors. David is fast, like scary fast, but not fast enough to dodge the brick. We have a knife, but I might as well be stabbing him to death with wet pasta for all the good it's doing. But thanks to the rule of threes, we're finally able to take him down. I offered you friendship, and you spat in my face. Face. Oh my god, how am I closer to death than you? You're the one that got stabbed. Joel continues his rip-roaring rampage of revenge to the Outback Steakhouse, where he finds Ellie deconstructing David like fucking sashimi. Ouch, 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 ouch. Ellie, 
Elliot's okay, it's me. He tried to feed me Carolina-style barbecue. The maniac. You did the right thing, girl. We arrive at Salt Lake City having accomplished the impossible. Travel through the United States without seeing a single highway interchange town. You'd think Joel would have learned his lesson about entering dark tunnels, but I guess all those blows to the head made his brain look like an NFL linebacker's. But the zombies aren't even the real problem compared to the fucking roaring river under the city. Get your hands off her, you creep. Oh, she's not breathing. Sure, oldest excuse in the book. Hey, you. You're finally awake. How'd you get here so fast? I rode my bike. It took me 20 days. I don't know why you walked across the country for six months. You must have run across a bike shop at some point. Where's Ellie? Ellie's in surgery. Is she gonna be okay? Well, you know, it's brain surgery, so there's not zero risk. But her prognosis looks good, and I trust our surgeon. Is what Marlene should have said, but instead she said, Well, no, we're gonna crack that dome like a coconut and jam a fucking immersion blender in her brain. Is the vaccine even gonna help at this point? Even if no one else gets infected, people are still running around getting bit in the jugular. Are you guys gonna vaccinate people against getting ripped in half? You've been spending too much time with your brother. We're doing the brain puree plan. I am not signing a release for that. Welcome to the final chapter of The End of Everyone, Part 1. Finally, I have acquired a gun fit for a true American rampage. And I didn't leave any witnesses, so there's no way anyone could trace this back to me in 10 years and hunt me down in an epic quest for vengeance. Hey buddy, uh, what you got there? Uh, a gun? <laughs> Damn it, Joel, you've killed the last of us. I guess that makes me the last of us, too. What? That doesn't make any sense. You know, Ellie, I think you really would have liked my dead daughter. Of course, she'd be like 34 now. Then again, she could have ended up being really homophobic for all I know. Joel, swear to me, there is no cure for Ligma. Ellie, I swear to you, there is no cure for Ligma balls! <laughs> Oh, we fucking got him! The main legacy of this game is the rise of the serious dad genre, because gamers need a video game to teach them how to be a good father. And in this case, it means not letting an unlicensed doctor perform lethal brain surgery on your child. Thanks, Naughty Dog, for that important life lesson. I think the reason this series is adapted so well into prestige television is because that's what it's always been. Because this is the video game equivalent of Oscar bait, the gameplay takes a backseat to the story. Sorry, Naughty Dog, I did not find acting as a human barge to be especially compelling. But the thing that I remember about this game isn't the pulse-pounding, square-mashing combat Combat. It's the fucking giraffes. It's not even an original idea. It's The Walking Dead meets Children of Men, but it's an extremely well-presented story in a medium where focused narratives are uncommon. That's the biggest impact of The Last of Us. Its ripples dramatically raised the bar for video game narrative, eventually even making a video game adaptation that didn't suck. The main difference between the show and the game is that the game is incredibly understated. Many of the characters' actions and motivations are left up to audience interpretation. As the game begins, there is no plan, no long-term goal or strategy, no hope. All Joel or anybody else has left is bitter, miserable, selfish survival. But as Joel leaves his gamer basement and actually touches grass, he meets more people. He begins to realize hope for the future, specifically Ellie's future. The problem now becomes that there's no point in that future without Ellie in it. So he somehow manages to make a decision that is simultaneously selfish and selfless. But it's a duality in opposition, and eventually he's gonna have to get beaten to death with a golf club for it. Enormous thank yous to the Ottawa Welshman, Tarkas Arkasar, Strat Gaming, and Mellow Scott for taking the time to lend their voices to this ridiculous video. Go to their channels right now, or I will infect you with the Cordyceps fungus. Go now, comment on their videos and tell them that I sent you. Like their videos, subscribe to their channels. The more of you that do that, the more credibility I get as a collaborator, and the more likely they'll be willing to do this nonsense again.